So you've built and back tested a couple trading systems on say NinjaTrader, maybe your own platform or other platforms like TradeStation. How do you actually run them and what's the best way to run these trading bots? In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to run trading systems in NinjaTrader specifically. However, you can take these tips to other platforms or your own if you have built your own framework. But this video is specifically gonna focus on NinjaTrader, which is a platform I use to run all my trading systems and my portfolio. So let's just paint a picture here. Say you've developed your strategies, you've back tested it, it looks good, you've done walk forward optimization, you've included slippage and commissions, you're happy with all of the above, and you actually want to operate and run the strategy. How do you do it correctly? So let's hop in on how to do it correctly. So I'm going to uh, share my screen here. Do, do, do. Let's take, we'll say this strategy, for example. So this is the NinjaTrader platform. I have the strategy here at the top right. It's called Skyshark. I've done the back test on uh, here and, and it looks good. You know, I'm happy with everything and I want to run this strategy live. If this is your first time running strategies, uh, the first tip is running it with a chart. Running the strategy live with a chart helps you understand fundamentally how it's working and why it's making trades. So I always recommend for beginners to run the strategy with a chart. You can also run strategies without a chart, which is less CPU intensive. Uh, but if you're a beginner, I'd recommend running it with a chart. So if we've had our strategy, first off, before even running it, what I recommend is also saving it as a template. So saving the settings so that when I go to run it, I know it exactly matches up with the back test and I'm having no you know, small mistakes of either wrong stop loss values, wrong profit target values, profit target values or wrong, you know, parameters. So at the bottom right, there's a template button. I'll move my, my camera over here. Template. This needs to be your friend. Okay. You need to make sure that when you run any strategy live, it matches up with the parameters of the back test or else you're gambling, right? Or else all that work that you've done to back test and find that edge is not real live because your profit targets off by a dollar or you're trading the wrong instrument. So you're going to hit template and then save and call it whatever you want. I, I'll have micro here, for example. So I'll save it as micro. And it's going to save my profit target values, my stop loss values, um, my instrument. Although NinjaTrader sometimes is buggy. Sometimes it doesn't save the instrument, uh, but it should. Uh, it's going to save the, uh, the time frame and all the other settings. So I have my strategy. I've saved my template. Maybe you want to have an Excel sheet too with all these settings just as a double check. So you can do that as well. Maybe you have a, a separate Excel sheet um, where you input these, although there, there could be some user input error, but we've saved our template. We have it locked in. Now we want to run the strategy live. So take a mental note, you know, we know Skyshark uh, trades MES on 10 minute. That's what we developed it on. So I'm going to go to my, my NinjaTrader main screen. Let me just connect to my, uh, my data feed here. So as a beginner, I recommend running in a chart so you understand how it's trading. So to do that, you click new at the top left, go to chart. If I remember correctly, I know Skyshark trades micro ES futures. So I'm going to do MES. I know it trades 10 minute. So I'm going to do 10 minute here. Now here's another tip, loading data. So when you start a strategy, usually you need to preloaded data so indicator values can update uh, and have enough data to, to enter a trade or to be ready to enter a trade. So I always recommend not doing bars. I do days and I, I like to load a lot of days. I, I usually do 200 days just so I'm confident and there's extra, extra data uh, for any indicator values to, to update. So I always do 200 days. You can do more if you want, but if you do too little, what happens is that your strategy may not enter for a while. Right. If you're using a 50 period SMA or 200 period SMA, especially on days and you only load five to 10 days, it's never going to enter a trade because it doesn't have those 200 days for that SMA or say RSI to load. So you want to load more days than what you need. So you have that buffer. So always set it to 200 on days to load. Another big thing is the trading hours. Sometimes you develop strategies on different trading hours. Like, for example, we know that micro ES futures the default trading hours are 23 hours, right? 6 p.m. Eastern to 5 p.m. Eastern the next day. But I know the strategy I developed with 
real-time hours, RTH, which is normal stock market hours, 9.30 a.m. Eastern to 4 p.m. Uh, Eastern. So make sure you double check that and set to what you want it to set. I'm gonna set it to RTH and then the rest of the settings should be good. Oh, whoops, let's go back here. US equities RTH and that's normal stock market hours in the NinjaTrader platform. I'm gonna hit okay. I'm just gonna double check that it was RTH. Yeah, it was, okay. So we have our chart set up. Now we wanna actually run our strategy. So to attach a strategy, top middle here, there's an icon that looks like a clipboard with a couple squiggly lines. I'm gonna hit strategies. I'm gonna add Sky Shark. And now I'm gonna load my template. This is where I'm gonna load my template. Template load, I called it micro. That's when I load, you can see the profit target and stop loss updated to correctly to what I set it to. The input series did not load from the template because I attached it to a chart. That is the one con, the one downside of running strategies in a chart is that your template settings for the instrument and the time frame will not save and you have to manually enter those. However, I think the upside is greater than that. Uh, like I said, especially if you're a beginner, it's just really important to see you know, your strategy work in real time and, and see the price movement as well. Um, other tips, obviously your account. So if you want to trade this with a live account, you'd want to select your live account here. The default is SIM 101, which is a paper slash simulation account. The rest of the settings should be default. On bar close, make sure this is definitely set. Unless you specifically developed your strategy to trade on tick or on price range, 99% of the time you want to leave this on bar close. Uh, changing it otherwise can have catastrophic um, catastrophic events, probably on the downside because it's going to be now calculating on, on price change or on each tick. But you usually want to use on bar close. And for most realistic strategies, you're going to be using on bar close. Start behavior is another question I get a lot as well. 99% of the time, you use wait until flat. And what that means is that when the strategy starts and it, hypo it hypothetically basically does a back test with those days to load that we set. So remember when we set it to 200, it's gonna do a sample back test on those 200 days. And then after that back test is done, it's gonna switch into a real time state. If hypothetically it's in a position in that back test, the wait until flat setting is gonna wait until that hypothetical position is out of a trade, all right? So if you turn on your strategy and it was in a trade from last night and it hasn't exited yet, your strategy will not start live when you start it. It will kind of stay in that historical state until that profit target or stop loss or exit signal is hit. Then once that hits, it the, you'll see the strategy turn green and then uh, it will go live. 99% of the time you won't wait until flat, just leave it as that. The 1% of the time, and this sh should very, very rarely happen, you may want to immediately submit synchronized account. When you wanna do this is usually two reasons. A, you for whatever reason wanna be in a position right away with the strategy for maybe, you know, you have some type of, you just wanna get into the market really, really quickly. Or B, you had an issue with your strategy, you had to turn it off, or maybe you got disconnected, which obviously really happens, uh, or you had a bug in the code, and you want to re-enable your strategy, but you're actually in a position, in a live position in your account. If that were to happen, then you do want to immediately submit synchronized account. And what that'll do is that will synchronize your live account position with the strategy position, okay? So the strategy position, is hypothetical and then you have your live account position that's actually in your account are you long or short this instrument and if it's supposed to be in a position it will synchronize the two so it'll take the strategy position and the live account position and synchronize it and then the strategy is aware that hey you're in a live account position we're going to carry on but that's one percent of the time right like i said it doesn't happen very often that you're having an issue with your strategy midway through the day or through the trading session so wait until flat Definitely, this is your default. Uh, other settings, um, exit on session close. This is another parameter you want to double check sometimes. You know, make sure if you develop your strategy to exit on session close that it's checked. Obviously your template, when you load it, should pre-populate this, but 
double check that. I've had a couple issues in the past where I had a, a day trading strategy that wasn't checked and it wasn't exiting. And that could be problematic, right? If you developed a strategy to exit on the session close and it's not live, that's, that's a massive uh, discrepancy. So double check that, make sure that's good. Then once you're happy, there's an enabled checkbox here and I'm gonna hit apply and okay. So now the strategy is active Sky Shark. You can see it's green, right? That means the strategy is running. It's synced with my account. It's aware. It's not in any positions right now and it's running in a chart. Uh, it's 5 p.m. right now, so the future session is closed. So I'm not getting any real-time data, but this is also a good time to check that you're getting real-time data and that price is moving uh, and whatnot. And uh, you can see the previous trades here as well. So this is why I recommend, you know, starting a strategy with a chart as a beginner because you can see previous trades and how it's trading as well. Plus, if you have indicators on here, they'll, they'll show up in the chart as well. And it's great for beginners. However, once you get more and more strategies, you don't want too many charts open. Once you start getting past 10 to 20 strategies live, it's sort of annoying to have 10 to 20 charts open. So you can run strategies without charts. Uh, and I'll give you a sneak peek of what that looks like. Here's my one of my dev servers. Uh, you can see some of the strategies there and how they're all running. So you can start strategies without a chart as well. Uh, to simply do that, you just go to the strategies tab in NinjaTrader, right click anywhere on the screen, hit new strategy. We'll do the same one, let's do Sky Shark again. Then I will load my template, remember? Templates, very important, very, very, very important. Load my template, I loaded everything. And it did lo load my instrument and time settings and my trading hours. My days to load is five. We don't want that. We want more data. We want enough buffer data to load, right? So I'm gonna change that to 200. And then everything else is okay. Now you will notice there's no enabled checkbox on strategies without charts. I'm not sure why, but if I hit okay, it makes another Sky Shark instance here. But this time it's not attached to a chart. So you have to enable it through the, the strategies tab and you won't actually know um, how the chart looks like. Obviously, if it's in a position, you'll see this will update to one uh, S for one short or one L for one long, but um, you won't be able to see it in a chart. So that's OK, uh, but that's another way to do that. If you have, you know, only three to five strategies, definitely do charts. It's, it's easier to visualize and it gives you more confidence that it's working correctly. But once you start using NinjaTrader for a while, I'd say six months to a year, uh, you know, it's okay to start strategies without charts. And, th and that's what I do because I have I have over 10 and I don't want, I want 10 charts open. Uh, it's just too slow and, and laggy. But that's how you, you run strategies and kind of some best tips to, to follow on running strategies with NinjaTrader. Now, if you're running strategies with TradeStation or your own proprietary platform, I think there's a lot of tips you can take forward with that as well. Um, tips like loading enough data for your indicators to load, I think you can take to any platform or your own. Make sure you have enough data so that your, your indicators or signals can, can look at the previous historical price data and have enough data to start making decisions. Uh, that's a big one. And then, of course, running with charts, if I recall correctly, TradeStation, you can only run strategies with charts. You cannot run strategies without them. So uh, TradeStation, you have to run it with charts. Uh, but other platforms, it may be beneficial as a beginner just to get that boost of confidence that things are working correctly. Um, the biggest thing that I like with charts, once again, is to double check that your real-time data is working and it's not delayed or, or you know, you're basically, you know, to summarize, you're able to see if price data is moving and if price data is moving, that means your strategy logic is, is executing, uh, especially if you have on bar closed data. So that's how you run strategies with uh, NinjaTrader. Let me know in the comments below if you want some tips on how to monitor your strategies or how to build tools to start monitoring to make sure your strategies are running correctly. Uh, I think you guys could see some value in that, but let me know in the comments below. That's all for today's video and we'll see you next week. Peace out, guys.